Remember when Muslim women didn't shame Muslim men on the internet? Remember when Muslim women didn't complain about polygamy day and night? Remember when Muslim women would take pride and honor in their responsibilities? I can keep going. I need you and girls who think like you to understand how petty this is. Because this type of comment can be thrown right back in your face. Now, yes, it is the absolute right of the woman to set the mehr at whatever she wants. However, it is recommended, meaning she gets rewarded, if she sets the mehr low. And men have the absolute right to reject your mehr offer. And he is allowed to present a counter offer. If I was a guy, I would only ever accept a mehr around 5k, like max. Not because I'm cheap, but because if a girl wants 10k or more, that's suspicious to me. Why do you want money just laying around? Why are you marrying me if you do not feel secure with me? I wouldn't want to marry a girl where her priority is her pockets rather than the marriage. Muslims need to wake up. In the West, the divorce rate amongst the Muslims is similar to the divorce rate of the non-Muslims. They're both around 50% which tells us that Muslims are approaching marriage very similarly to how non-Muslims approach marriage. Now, non-Muslims mm. don't typically get married until they find a spouse that does X, Y, Z for them, meaning they get married for selfish reasons. And now we have Muslim women who come on the internet and say, I will not marry a guy unless he provides me this, this, and this. And guys who make posts as well who say, I will not marry her unless she's this, this, and that. People need to stop using preference as an excuse to just be selfish. Yes, everyone has preferences, but we also compromise. If you're not willing to compromise material preferences, then you're selfish. Both parties need to start approaching marriage selflessly. The best marriage is when both individuals care more about their partner and their needs than themselves, because this ensures that both people are satisfied. And there is also an establishment of trust amongst the relationship. Now to all the Muslim men out there who see this type of pose and get discouraged, please don't. There are so many Muslimas who really don't think like this. We have to remember that TikTok is not a representation of the Ummah, alhamdulillah. Now what makes me cringe the most about these types of posts is that they actually encourage to make marriage harder. And this is what I'm saying when Muslims need to wake up. When you post these types of things, you're promoting that people stay single until they find the right man, they don't settle and this and that. Like we have amongst the Ummah a zina problem. Collectively, as an ummah, we need to start making marriage easier. And these types of posts are not helping. And as a side note, girls who think like this typically shame other girls who are fine with polygamy. If you are a woman who shames and thinks polygamy is gross, you have internalized Islamophobia. On top of that, if you think the sharia is gross, then there is likely an issue with your iman. Like honestly, men and women who have these selfish attitudes make me cringe to the max. Please just check yourselves. Who? Say it louder for the sisters in the back. This was good. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, may Allah bless the sister. May Allah bless her. Subhanallah. That's facts. That's facts. And uh, I mentioned in a different video. I don't know which one's going up first. I mentioned in a different video why you know men and women might feel certain ways about marriage and stuff. Uh, and I think she summarized it very well because if you think about it, if both men and women are going into marriage looking for materialistic things or very, um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Just very. Things that aren't really that important, right? These 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 small mm. things like um, how much uh, how much money he's gonna give you during the mahr and all of that. If you're mm. getting into marriage for things like that, that's not gonna bring you happiness because these things fundamentally don't bring you happiness. Let, let's remove the man and the woman. If you naturally yourself had billions of dollars, that doesn't equal happiness. Maybe it equals some form of security, but that doesn't ensure your happiness. What does Allah subhanahu wa taala say about having contentment? And by the way, as a little side note, happiness is not what people should be looking for. Because happiness is the feeling, it, you know, it comes and goes. Contentment is what people should look for. Because the definition of contentment has happiness in it. So look for contentment. So contentment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, those who remember Allah, right, who have the, the remembrance of Allah, their hearts will find ease, contentment. So you should look for the partner that will remind you of Allah. Because that's the true contentment that you're going to find, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu there's actually, there's a hadith, uh, not a hadith, there's a verse in the Quran. Uh, it was, I think, a dua that says, uh, grant us uh, pious spouses and children who will be the coolness of our eyes and allow us to be leader for the righteous. And if you look at this saying, coolness of our eyes, it's because when you cry, you cry hot tears, warm tears, right? The tears are warm. And there is a poem talking about <clears throat> one guy is going to get revenge on someone else. He's going to make his knife warm with his blood and he's going to make his, his eyes warm with, with, with tears, basically. So the coolness of the eyes is basically being content, right? And, and, and when you look at your spouse and you find that coolness and that contentment in their eyes, it's because they're a pious Muslim brother or sister, 
And that's where you're going to find true happiness in. So don't get lost in the whole, uh, give me this much money. Give me, it's not a business transaction. And it's, it's going to, it's going to fail. Mashallah, mashallah. Bro, listen, you, my mind's blown at what you're saying right now. Ladies, uh, he has a couple of slots open. So uh, shoot your shot, permissibly. What I wanted to say is come from a different, uh, look at him, bro, choking on his drink. I'm coming from a different approach right now that uh, a lot of women today and a lot of men, when they approach marriage, they fall into this, western netflix type of ideology like it's supposed to be perfect and it's supposed to be you know every day he's gonna get me flowers or for the 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 man he thinks like you know she's gonna be uh not gonna give me some lip and she's gonna be the same every single day of the month um women don't and we all know this so just these fairy tales bro and like at the end like you have to realize marriage is more of a responsibility than a lot of people want to admit and i feel like people fall victim to this because in hollywood and netflix and tvs it seemed like this perfect thing and people only show the best parts of their life on instagram so i don't know why people are equating instagram to like what realistically happens behind people's closed doors right so that's one point number two look at the nikah bro i hate to say it but a marriage in islam it's it really is kind of like a contract it really is where you have roles and responsibilities it's not something you take light like you put someone's initials on your bio and then you like date them no there's not a sum so i don't know what's on your mind not much actually not much mm, except that you said it all yeah hey, i'm single for sure mashallah not for long inshallah, inshallah. not for long bro Oh, it's kind of long. Bro, you said something and it, it, it triggered a thought in my mind. And I really wanted to share it and I was gone, bro. I pulled an Angel like like big time. <sighs> I remember what I was going to say. If you have huge expectations of this huge mahir or she's going to be this amazing, perfect wife like Khadija, if you have huge expectation, uh, expectations, that's fine. But you need to have equal expectations for yourself and you need to mm -hmm. be to the same degree. Keep that in mind. Guys, you don't know this, like, this, like, was, uh... this was filmed like a week later. Like he finally <laughs> remembered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a week later. Yeah, but it's like what the sister, I think her name was Naima. Yeah. It's like what she said, where it's like, you got to look at yourself and be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Am I worth that? Like, I'm asking for this, but am I worth that? Am I equal worth to that yes. that I'm asking for? Very true, mashallah. Very true. <laughs> With that being said, then I guess uh, we'll close off this one. It was a quickie. Yeah, I'll tell you. With that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirat hasana wa kina adhaab nar. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Make sure you guys make some dua for the sister. I mean, I mean, that's crazy because y'all know how like impactful it was. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? If you're watching this, it was so it was such a strong dream that I woke up and then I was talking to my dad and I was crying because of how strong the dream was, how impactful the dream was. And then I ended up driving to uh, the mosque. It was like 5.40 something to do Fajr at the mosque. And I was crying the entire way to the mosque. And subhanAllah, I think it's crazy that